the American Bullfrog. Check it out. Look at it hop. Hoppity hop hop. It's native to Central and Northern America, but you can pretty much find it all over the world now. This bullfrog, in places where it's not native, it can be somewhat of a pest because it can threaten the local populations of other animals and mess up the ecology. The females of this species can lay up to 20,000 eggs at a time, man. 20,000 eggs! The monarch butterfly. This iconic species may be in trouble. It has drastically decreased in population over the last 20 years. What are we gonna do about it, guys? Bye. We'll see you again. The white water lily. If you want to see the flowers of this plant, you have to catch it before noon because this plant flowers in the early morning and closes up around noontime. This specific lily is native to the northeastern United States. Fun fact, this plant can be used to treat chronic diarrhea. The great blue heron. This little bird right here is not so little. I've been confusing this thing with a crane this whole entire time. This bird is a stalking bird, meaning it sits like in a meditative state and just hunts its prey. It actually has a specially designed neck that allows it to strike super quick at its prey. And that's actually how you can tell the difference between a crane and a heron is that a heron has a curve in its neck when it flies. Cranes don't. The red-winged blackbird. We'll get more into this in another episode when I get better footage of it. Intense. It's wild. He got it. Last throw. Last throw of the day. Got him. The largemouth bass. I feel like this is the most widely known species of fish. The mother can lay up to 40,000 eggs at a time. This fish never stops growing, and the biggest one ever caught is 22 pounds, 4 ounces. That's one big fish. The ebony jewel wing. Now, this is not a dragonfly as you might think. This is actually a damselfly, and there's a few key differences between dragonflies and damselflies, like how their wings come together when they land, and damselflies have smaller eyes and thinner, narrow, twig like bodies. You see, apparently these are all milkweeds, and milkweeds are the things that uh, monarchs use as a nectar source and provide shelter and help them migrate. So, hopefully, we'll be able to see some monarchs. There's a deer. The white-tailed deer is an herbivore that browses for food at dawn and dusk. Only the males grow antlers, and they shed them each year. They use the antlers not to fend off predators, but to fight other deer to see who gets to drop the D on the doe. So, I'm having a little trouble discerning what species of bat this is exactly, because its head is down and I can't really see its ears, and it's a pup. It's obviously a baby one, so let's just call it a bat and discuss all the bat-ass things that all bats have in common that are specifically different from other animals. Whoa. There are over 1,200 species of bats. They are the only mammals capable of true flight. They can maneuver better while flying than birds can because they have more control over their wings than birds do. Some bat colonies are even known to have bigger populations than any current human city. Whoa, it freaked me out. The Maclora plumifera, otherwise known as the hedge apple or Osage orange, is a deciduous tree that grows from 30 feet to 60 feet tall. It has a very distinctive fruit and thorny branches. And those thorny branches are where the term hedge apple comes from because they used to use these trees as hedges before barbed wire was invented. They would plant them really close together and trim them and they used them to keep critters out, things out, people out of their yard, their farms, and whatever. They just plant them all around and that's just one use of this beautiful plant.
Another use is more of like a myth, and some people believe it, some people don't, but it's cool. There's researchers at Iowa State University that took these things, and the myth is that these hedge apples repel spiders and insects and stuff. Well, these researchers took the compounds that make up this whole entire hedge apple and broke them down, and they did find a insect repelling substance in it, but the contents of this substance that naturally occur in this fruit are not high enough, and you need to actually concentrate this substance in order for it to be an effective insect repellent. Another amazing thing about this tree is that Native Americans used it to make longbows because of its flexibility and its resistance to rot. It really lasts a long time, it's super flexible, and Native Americans would make these bows that people would travel to try to get these things because they were just so awesome and really durable and good.